Yeah, welcome to another Rock and Load interview. Um, today I've got the pleasure of uh, chatting to the legendary Dan Reed. <laughs> so, um, 2014 has been another busy year for you personally, but the highlight and for the majority of your fans was Dan Reed Network's first European tour in yeah. over 20 years. How does it feel to be back together again and what does the future hold for the band? Uh, well, the, I guess the main thing that happened was like all of our old, you know, uh, behaviors as far as our inside jokes, um, uh, the camaraderie that we had before, uh, I guess, tour, what do you call it, you know, where you get kind of bored with things after a while. We were together for almost eight years, you know, with the records and have you, but uh, all the good stuff that we started off with the band with all came back and we're much more mature now, so uh, I think we we really appreciate each other much more now. Mm -hmm. So the feeling was uh, amazing in that way. And being on stage, I think, my personal belief is that all the guys are playing better than they used to even back in the old days. Um, once again, maybe possibly because of the maturity. Um, I'm just trying to keep my breath, you know, <laughs> in those yeah, songs yeah. because I'm trying to, you know, put put all that energy back into those because uh, my solo stuff is all kind of chill and mellow mm -hmm. and then with the network you know I'm trying to bounce around like I'm 25 again yeah yeah no, so that. uh, that's uh, challenging it's a great workout um, but we're really having a great time and that's kind of led us into the idea of wanting to make a new record because we love we miss playing together so it's not something that we're going to uh, spend nine months ten months on the road doing um, I don't think anybody especially where we're at in our lives, wants to do that. But we definitely are excited about getting in the studio and seeing what uh, a DRN record would sound like 20 years later. Yeah. What, what is the band's, what should this record be like? What should it sound like? Should it mix, mix technology again um, with, uh, you know, raw playing? Um, should we go more toward the raw side? Should we get even more techno-y? Um, so that'll uh, be determined next year. Okay. So we're going to make a new album in 2015. So it's going to, when's the, I, when's the, um the goal for the, the new album to well, be released? Yeah, we hope to have it released by the fall, after next summer. Right. So, so hopefully record it uh, right before the summer or during the summer and have it ready to go. Uh, there's not these big turnaround times. In the old days you have to have a record done about six yeah. months before it's yeah. released. And now with uh, the digital world and the internet um, and music, people aren't buying CDs as much as mm -hmm. they used to. So. It's really about uh, the videos and the live shows. So if we can get the record done by, you know, mixed and mastered by the middle of the summer, then we'll have it released by the fall. Excellent. Yeah. And your tour that you do as a European tour that you did, you go into the States as well in November, is it? Yeah, we're doing just three shows though. Yeah. Seattle, Portland, and Phoenix just got added. So we'll do three shows, um, hometown area, nor Northwest. Yeah. Um, it'll be our first show in Seattle in over, I don't know, uh, 20 years, I guess. So. Wow. Right, so. Have you written anything at all for the, the network? Yeah, new I album? have. I have been writing. Well, you, oddly enough, what's interesting is that I've been working on my uh, next solo record, right. and I've been kind of torn with where to go with that because I really like um, investigating kind of the more down tempo, mellower side of stuff with my solo material. But I was starting to get hungry for rocking a little bit, as you can tell with Signal Fire. Yeah. It has a few songs on there, it's got some teeth, but it's still not network style stuff, right? Um, and then it was, I think one of the guys in the band, Melvin or Dan, said, why don't we play uh, um, All I Need Is You? We should play that in the network. And right. I was thinking, you know, now that I think about it, that song would have worked for the would, network. Yeah. And so I've been writing new stuff for the solo material, and I've been writing some heavier stuff for it too. So I'm going to transfer that over and just start sending some demos over to the band guys. And, and right. there's also some stuff I wrote back during the club days before uh, I got all messed up on uh, drugs and alcohol before I lost the plot. I was writing some stuff, and there's a couple songs there that I think uh, could be uh, DRNized or whatever. some more electronic bass. Yeah, it's electronic bass, but I think we can uh, funk it up and, and uh, make it a little heavy too. Right. And it's definitely uh, lyrically heavy. Um, it's pretty um, dark stuff. So it'd be interesting to see what we can do with the network, and that'd be all like Tiger in a dress, <laughs> yeah. and because we have those songs that we can play. Yeah. So I think uh, the network record should fit with the times. I mean, the world that we're living in right now is even more complex and, yeah. and scary in a lot of ways. Um, I think the world is in, the planet, uh, Earth is in worse shape than it was 25 years ago when we were singing about, you know, the heat and songs yeah. like that. So uh, why not fit into uh, 
but it's been set now. Yeah. So what are we going to hear first? A new solo album or a new network? Album? Yeah, that, I think the solo record we're gonna I'm gonna approach it completely different than I have the last two. The last two are really long writing processes, where um, and recording processes as well. Recording many different studios and taking a year to make it. Um, this next record I'm thinking about just getting in the studio with uh, Bang and Anikis, the drummer and the bassist, yeah. and myself, and I'll play more electric guitar a little bit, um, but not heavy. It's gonna be uh, definitely more down tempo and chill. And so we'll record the stuff live in two week period. So I'll have to do all the writing over the next three months. Okay. And then we'll probably record maybe January. And that'll be out in the spring. Right. So Excellent. release the solo record then and then uh, focus completely on the network stuff. Excellent. You recently went over to Sweden and you recorded a video for one of your old songs, Promised yes. Land, yeah. which appeared on your first solo album coming mm. up for her. Mm. What was the reasoning now recording a video for that song? Well, you know, being a father now, seeing the news about what's going on in Gaza and Israel as well, I mean, granted the numbers of the people dying in Gaza is much, much higher than in Israel, but uh, you got to look at the technology, you got to look at uh, a country that's been besieged by war, um, uh, surrounded by neighbors that have not wanted Israel to be there for a long, long time. And there's tempered peace now with Jordan, of course, in Egypt, but there's still uh, major issues with Lebanon, um, Syria, the Golan Heights. Uh, so Israel, as, as advanced as it is, um, is still not secure in, in many ways. And you can see that they're losing soldiers, uh, which are somebody's sons and daughters, right? And in Gaza, these, uh, just seeing these little children. Now, just yesterday, there was a four-year-old Israeli boy that died from some, some explosion of shell. So everyone's losing life over there. And I spent three years living in Jerusalem. I feel deeply connected to the conflict there because I think there will never be peace in the world until those two people are at peace together and the promised land the song is really about uh, the roots of the Arabs and the Jews you know they all they both come from the same father so to speak both religiously and physically um, which is Abraham the Muslims call him Ibrahim the Jews call him Avram we call him Abraham but uh, same father same blood father that started off these two different tribes that diverged and split up and then religion, uh, both uh, Judaism and Islam pay homage and credence to uh, Abraham starting this whole thing. So if I keep dreaming and hoping that they're going to be able to go back and look at the roots of their, of their family tree and, and focus on that as opposed to uh, all the stuff that's going on now. So I wanted to make a video just to kind of say, uh, um, to honor the people that are losing their lives over there, the people that are risking their lives to fight for what they believe in, whether they're Palestinian or Israeli. And uh, the song, I think, says a lot about that, yeah. I hope. Are you just gonna put the video out onto YouTube or are you gonna use it in any other way? No, well, I don't know. I mean, there's, there was a way to try to raise, raise awareness with some websites and stuff we could put on the end of the video as well, but it'll probably just go straight, straight to YouTube. But what we're focusing on is, um, most of it's going to be imagery of yeah. uh, multi-faith gatherings. Um, there's so many beautiful images that we don't get to see in the news of uh, people that are really working for peace in that, in that region. But unfortunately, the news makes a lot of money off of just showing us the conflict, you know. So the video will show the opposite side of that. Right, good. Um, you've either recorded or performed live a few cover versions in recent times, um, namely Holy Diver mm. by Dio, My Hometown by Springsteen, Avalanche by Justin Lavache. Yeah, yeah. Have you any other cover versions in the pipeline or um, that, you, that you'd like to do in the future? Uh, well, there's a couple, uh, there's a John Lennon, a uh, couple songs of John that I would like to try to learn. Um, there's so much material out there, there's so many great songs. I, I, I mean, I would love to cover a lot of stuff, but it's the problem is you don't, I don't want to play three hour sets, you know? Mm. <laughs> but, yeah, exactly. He's good at it, you know? God bless his soul. I don't know how he does it, mm. so uh, maybe he's got a one of those treadmill bicycles backstage or something, but he's amazing, he really is. And then, you know, I wasn't that big of a fan of Bruce Springsteen. I, I, thought he, I thought he was great, but I didn't listen to a lot of his music until recently. Um, I started getting into uh, his music because I was invited to play a tribute show, yeah. uh, sing at a show and sing some of his songs. And I gotta say, it was uh, a great lesson for me as a songwriter, hearing how he can take some really simple chord progressions and make wonderful arrangements out of them. Um, and his lyrics and his poetry is uh, unmatched. So, uh, yeah, I'm a big spring. Maybe some more Springsteen. Yeah. There's a song called Independence Day, which yeah. is about leaving your uh, home, leaving your father, and 
uh, spreading your wings on your own, which I uh, do you relate to. Very much so. Very much so. Yeah. Well, talking about your past and things that you relate to, you've been writing an autobiography over the past few years. Yeah. Is that any nearer to completion? It's a uh, it's a challenging project. That one, you know. Even recently, I I wrote a whole forward to it, which was about maybe ten pages on an airplane, um, just a couple weeks ago, and I saved it. And when I got home, it was it was gone. So I don't know. It's like the, the universe keeps telling me to wait. Maybe yeah. uh, to write some kind of life story book is maybe better for when my life is winding down. When the time is yeah. right. <laughs> you know, I don't know. So we'll see. So us fans that want to hear about everything you've got to say, <laughs> we've just got to wait a few more years. Yeah, well, we'll see. I mean, if I get a <clears throat> month away, if I can, you know, now with my son, when I'm home, I like playing with him yeah, and, yeah. and being a father and... I think, and being on the road is always like crazy and, and fun and, and spending time with a lot of different people. It's uh, something that requires concentration, writing this book. I've written a lot of chapters for it. I've sent a few chapters to some friends to read and uh, they've given me some notes about how to improve it as far as uh, making sense, you know, because I, I like doing stream of consciousness type stuff yeah. about my time in Jerusalem, uh, my time in India at the monastery. And, and uh, the rock and roll world and why I left it behind and what it attracted to me in the first place and what brought, it, brought, brought me back again eventually. And my time with almost losing my life and mind through uh, substance abuse. The and good and the bad. Times. Finally, <laughs> finally, what advice would the 2014 Dan Reed give to the 1984 Dan Reed? Um, don't take everything so serious, I would say to myself, you know, don't, uh, I mean, it's important to have drive, it's important to have ego in the music business, because without it, you kind of look at it as a hobby, so I think it's important that you think that you're really good at what you do, and that you deserve to be up there on the stage, um, but I would like to wear that as a, a piece of clothing, as opposed to having it rooted in my heart, because uh, what eventually drove me away from the music business was the same thing that attracted me to it, was wanting to be a rock star. Mm -hmm. And then and then realizing, getting up to that point of opening for Bon Jovi and the Stones and that stuff and seeing life from that level, I realized being a, being a rock star, so to speak, was, uh, I guess, an empty dream to chase for me. It was something that a lot of people hunger for and you can see why fame it feeds the, the soul in so many different ways but uh, it wasn't a positive thing for me to experience in the end. Now uh, I love playing in front of you know 20 people in the house. Yeah, yeah. I love playing uh, at uh, Download this last year um, so I just shouldn't have taken things so serious back in the day. That's the best yeah. advice you could have given yourself. Yeah and, uh, and really appreciate the opportunities I had and not turn my back on it maybe. Just because the grunge scene came didn't mean we all had to give up playing, you know. And a lot of bands did. You know, they got buried. I remember when Iron Maiden couldn't play like a 1500C club, yeah. right? Now they're playing for 12,000 yeah. people again. Because they never gave up, yeah. you know. And I just gave up. I said, this is, the music business is changing. Um, I want to do something different. I want to be home. I want to be with my dog. I want to uh, work in the garden with my father. That kind of stuff. Yeah. But now you're back, yeah. and I think, and many other people think, that you're stronger than ever. So, oh, that's nice to see. So, thank you very much. It's thank been you. a pleasure, Dan. Oh, thank you for talking to us. It's an honour, and thank you.